It's Nail in the Apex, Tim Haraney, Adam Wilde, and Jack Crawford, a name that you, if you don't already know, I know the hardcores know, but if you don't know Jack Crawford, you're going to get to know him. Uh, you're going to get to know him today, and this will not be the last time you hear this name. Trust me on that. Jack, uh, before we get started, I want to know your official title within the Aston Martin program. Like, how does, when, you, when you're asked to introduce yourself, how do you, what's the title? How do you talk about it? Sorry, I lost you there for about five seconds. Oh, that's great. No, it's perfect. The question. <laughs> no, so I, w my question was, my question was, uh, when you are asked to introduce yourself, like your your title within the Aston Martin driver program, uh, how, how what is the actual title? How do you introduce yourself? That's a that's a tricky question. I would call myself. Um, a member of the Young Driver Development Program. Okay. For Aston Martin Aramco. There we go. There you go. I like that. <laughs> I love that you got Aston Martin Aramco in there too. We got to get the sponsors. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack, so you, you had the opportunity to drive um, the 2022 car yesterday uh, in your home your hometown, uh, Houston, yep. Texas. Uh, what was that like? I mean, was the ride height like really high? Because, you know, those <laughs> roads can't be that smooth, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still I'm still buzzing from yesterday. It was such a, a cool experience. It was such a fun and great day. Um, but yeah, absolutely enjoyed the day, like I said. And um, yeah, about the the roads, they were bumpy. <laughs> um, and uh, I think you realize how like the the tracks are made for the cars, and even the bumpy tracks are are nothing compared to what it's like on the road, even with, you know, we, we raised the ride heights and everything. It's still, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, uh, it was quite the experience, but it was, it was my first time doing something like that. And it was, it was really, really cool. Honestly. What was the, uh, what was the fan reaction like? It was, um, a lot cooler than I thought it would be. Um, so, I mean, I, like I said, I'd never done any demo runs. I'd, I'd, I'd actually never even done any donuts in any type of car before. Um, and, um, we, we arrived at the, the Aramco, uh, headquarters here in, uh, in Houston. And, um, yeah, that I, I remember I did one run. There were probably a hundred, 150 people on the first run. I was like, all right, that's already a lot of people just from that came out of the building. And then we took a 10 minute break. And then we went again and there were, was probably like triple the yes. amount of people. Wow. There was like so many people just standing out there and watching. It was, it was, it was really, really cool to see. Yeah. The, uh, the, the donuts, Jack, like back in the days. Uh, so like when I used to race uh, champ car Atlantics and all that kind of stuff, you know, you cranked the brake bias all the way to the front and then you just stamp on the brake pedal and use your right foot to accelerate just a bit, turn some steering lock in, and around you go. What do you do with a Formula One car? How do you get the thing to do a donut? <laughs> yeah, so I had a little thing going. I got pretty good at it. So I was always I was always grabbing the clutch quickly, dropping it, and then I just jabbed the throttle <laughs> a little bit and just to start my spin. And then as soon as I got into a rhythm, it was, it was super easy, but it was, it was actually quite tricky to find the rhythm because you have so much power. The car just yeah. wants to like shoot to the other side. So it's hard to keep it like really tight and in a, in a proper circle. I, I know it was just a demo run, but you know, they always talk about the differences between these F2 cars and the F3 cars and then the F1 cars, right. You know, uh, and like what the, the learning, the learning curve, like, you know, when everybody was so blown away with what Ollie Bierman did, you know, in Saudi Arabia with that Ferrari, um, because it was his first time using that. Did you, in that run, did you have to adjust to certain things that you just don't have in F2? Yeah, it, I, um, I remember, so I, I have driven the, the car before, but it, it's been a while. And I, I remember we were on the street, um, filming in the morning around around seven in the morning and it was we had basically kind of a a two-lane highway f for ourselves for about three kilometers and um so we were fall i was following the truck at first at around 60 miles per hour and then like they told me to like blast past them and i just remember i put my foot down and <laughs> there was so much so much power so much torque and that was um it was just a reminder of how much how much how much power I had underneath me at the time. Car kind of just explodes, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I, I had to make sure not to, you know, 
get too much wheel spinning and crash over any bumps. Yeah, or of anything. course. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that would be something. Yeah, you got to look out for that. <laughs> uh, Jack, you, you, we were we wanted to talk to you a bit about uh, F2 and your uh, F2 program so far. But uh, first, I wanted to yeah. ask you about the cars because, like, I mean, I mean, obviously, this is a new generation of F2 car that's that's come in for this season, and it, you know, it really does look like a lot of the top teams, you know, having a little bit of difficulty, like really trying to figure out this F2 car at this moment. And I'm sure once we get into next season, you know things will kind of get back to normal. But you know, what, what are you finding with the F2 car? Is, it, is, it, is this one really tricky to drive compared to like last year's iteration? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not so much I think it's tricky to drive. I think it's more, more tricky to set up. It's, it's, mm. it's with this sort of more ground effect aspect, it's harder to get in, into the right window with the right height. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, the best teams I think have, have gotten it right. I think, you know, for for me, from my experiences, um, the inconsistencies have come from from that kind of thing, and as well, well, the tires. I think everyone, of course, had been running the same car for about six years at mm-hmm. that point, or, or five yeah. five years. So you know, everyone everyone's used to it. So there's so many. I feel like there's a couple learning curves. The actual driving experience is pretty much exactly the same, like same exact engine, just the cars a bit. Um, different has a couple different tendencies, but more or less you you drive it the same. So it's 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 more uh, you know putting yourself in in the right window with with car setup and stuff. And uh, you know I'm looking at your stats here, just 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 total blanket stats here. You got a, it, it seems like you got a couple more races to go, 24 races in, and we're talking about right now an eight place improvement in in your score right 13 to 5 if my if my math's right my math is horrible um uh and you know that has to feel really good at basically the top level in the sport underneath formula one like that is that's a huge improvement what do you attribute that to um yeah a couple things yeah it's been a, a good season for sure um i must admit even even i feel like it almost feels like a bad season in a way because I feel like I've been very fast at times. But mm-hmm. of course, that's it's it's been a good season, but sometimes mm-hmm. it can feel that it's at, that it's been bad because we've been so fast at times, but it's kind of not turned anything. But I think that's always always racing. But um, yeah, I mean, compared to last year, there's there's a couple things I think. Um, you know, of course, the more experience always helps. Um, a year in the category, learning the you know, the, the tricks to, to the tires and, and the, you know, the tracks with the car. So, um, stuff like that, um, you know, that's always very important, especially the, the tire management stuff and, um, how to, you know, prepare them in the right window for, for qualifying. Um, that's one of the most important things that I think has helped, um, as well. I, I switched teams from high tech to dams, which was, I think that, the biggest thing for me, I was, it, it suited me a lot more, Dams did. And um, so I was able to learn a lot more about the car. I was able to learn a lot more about the setup and it helped me have a better understanding of what I was doing, why I was doing it. And then in turn was, was making me, you know, just overall understand a bit more what's going on. Mm-hmm. Man, the, that Dams team is, uh, they're, they're really good, man. They, they, they are. I've, I've followed them for a really long time and man, they always yeah. have competitive cars. Um, just kind of want to ask you a little bit about what was like, you know, be, being away from home. And uh, I mean, first of all, this Texas sunshine is no joke, Jack. I mean, if you can <laughs> not tell by my forehead <laughs> from here up, I, it's kind of like representing tomato action, but not really. I, I got cooked <laughs> today, man. The sun here is no joke. Uh, you know, be, being away from home for just so, so long, like how do you, I guess, how do you deal with it being away from family and friends? Because it can't be easy. Yeah, no. Um, I, I feel like it's been in my my life a long time. So I feel like that's probably why it's been a bit easier. I mean, since ever, I, since I can even remember, um, even when I'm 10, 11 years old, always traveling to, to go-kart races around the country and um being you know doing the four day weekends for for racing um thursday through sunday yeah um you know i feel like i've been doing that for a very long time um so actually then when i 
fully committed to racing in Europe. It was definitely different. It was definitely tricky. Um, but I think it, it was just sort of almost kind of normal at that point. Um, obviously, I had to get over the hurdle that I was, you know, a 10-hour flight from my family yeah. and, uh, and all that, which was a bit different. Um, so I've had to kind of learn and fend for myself a little bit. But no, it's um, it's it's turned out good now. Um, so we got all, over all the, the learning the learning hurdle and, um, you know, it's turned into a proper kind of job now for me. Yeah. It's, 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 it's pretty cool. Like I'm looking back through your, you know, as far back as what we're talking, what, 2017, 2016, you were racing in Europe and different programs and that sort of thing. And I, I look at your, your place of birth, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, home of the yep. Charlotte motor, motor speedway. Uh, <laughs> I, so listen, since we're North Americans, Give me, give me your top three favorite tracks in North America that you've raced. Okay. And then I also want to know what you love or what you don't like about the Charlotte Motor Speedway because it is legendary. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, top three tracks. So I really like Road America, Laguna mm-hmm. Seca, obviously. <laughs> um, those are some of the best. I think every person would say that mm-hmm. um are we going for north america or america because i might north have, america works um mexico city is a good one um i've raced there before i i always like that track so those are my those are my three mm-hmm. yeah. man and then no Charlotte. love for Watkins Watkins glenn Watkins yeah. Glenn. <laughs> i've never driven Watkins glenn Sorry. oh you never have oh, oh dude oh, you dude. need to drive Watkins glenn oh. <laughs> I love it on the on the simulator. I love it. It's so much fun. Oh, sorry, and, um, Adam. Go oh, yeah, go ahead. You were Charlotte saying Charlotte. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tell us about Charlotte. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I've I've raced at the Charlotte Motor Speedway a lot. Um, when I did, I used to do um, legend cars. Um, so we raced on the quarter mile mm-hmm. in the oval. Um, is it three things I don't like, or three? Oh, no, just I anything. Don't like? Tell us about it. What's it like to drive? Um, yeah, well, in the, in the quarter mile, it's pretty easy. It's all just uh, <laughs> turning left. Yeah. But, um, Don't let NASCAR fans hear that, Jack. You can't <laughs> say that out loud. But I have, I have driven the, the sort of, I mean, we did pretty much a roval for the quarter mile. Um, mm. that was lots of fun. Um, when we did the road courses at Charlotte Motor Speedway, that was tons of fun. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. To be honest, perfect. Um, they have great garages, Bojangles. They got Bojangles there, mm-hmm. uh, which is great. And yeah, I don't have too much to say. It's a nice, nice area around it. They got some good food, which is important. I love that. So. No, man, you, no Bojangles in Europe, dude. Yeah. <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> you need to bring one there. That's what you need to do. You need to take one uh, to the UK. I don't think it would fit in. I don't think it would fit into the culture. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man um so next season you're back in formula two so that just got announced uh not too long ago uh you're coming yeah. back with the, you're coming back with dams so um what what uh what, i guess for for me you know that ladder system to get to f1 is always extremely challenging and to, you know to to be in formula two you, you know you learn a, you learn a lot and coming into you know this next season, what, what's the one thing you think that, you know, you need to improve upon when you're entering next season? And what's, uh, what's the one thing you think you got in the bag with like, you know, you, you can do better than, than others. Um, yeah, I think to, to improve on would be definitely consistency, um, across the races. I think for me, I want to prove to myself and I haven't found it yet or else I'd be good at it, but, um, <laughs> that I can, you know, across all 14 rounds that we do over the year that I can, I can fight for wins at every single one of them. Um, I think obviously that also, you know, leads to, to doing well in, in the championship so that those kind of obviously align, um, with themselves. And then, yeah, I think I have a huge upper hand already on on the tire management stuff, which I think, and of course, I'll just be always, even even my second year, even I'm still learning so much, um, 
you know, I can't even imagine a, a third year, um, how much, how much better I'd be at, at, at that kind of stuff. And I guess that, I mean, you wouldn't be so much, I'd say it wouldn't be a huge, massive step in performance, but I feel like it would definitely help the consistency side of it as well. So that's, that's the biggest strength I, I see is understanding the tires and stuff. Sure. Now, we got a big race this weekend and we've been dying for some, some races, uh, uh, you know, and it's so great to be at this track. As you can tell, Tim was out in the sun all day. Uh, he's got the nice sunglass tan. Uh, you know, it's beautiful. Look at Look at how good he looks. Look how handsome he looks. Uh, <laughs> no, but so Jack, I want to, I want to ask you, obviously you, you, have, you're, I mean, you're a race fan as much as we are. You're, you're analyzing these guys on a level that, you know, a guy like me who is not a professional driver cannot relate to. When you look at the title fight between Max and Lando, okay, and you look at the way that Max started and you way that the Lando kind of – Lando and Oscar, I really have to say, took over during the summer. What do you see in that battle? Like what, what for you is the most exciting thing about that battle as a driver? Um, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. I think two of the, the top people – in the sport at the moment, for sure. Um, I mean, Lando's beating Oscar at the moment. Oscar is no slouch, obviously. Yeah, no and, kidding. Um, so they're, they're both doing a great job. Obviously, now McLaren has a bit of a better car, it seems, than, than Red Bull at the moment. And they seem to be, be struggling. I think, you know, the driver from the driver's side, I think it's, you know, it's two of the best that will that will do anything to, to win. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it could come down to... Could get it get get a bit spicy at times. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but yeah, it's 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 great to watch. I mean, the past three years, ever since twenty twenty one, have been pretty boring <laughs> in terms of the title fight. <laughs> hey, at least somebody yeah. said it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the title fight's been been pretty boring. So it, it's great to to see, honestly. Now, Tim, going into this weekend. Uh, cause, cause you know, Jack and Tim, I want to, I want to ask you both, you both are drivers. I want to, I want to kind of know what we're in for as we kind of preview this race. Um, what car do you think? And, and by the way, Jack, you don't have to have the same answer as Tim on this one. What car do you Jack's think? Jack's got room service. Hold on a second. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You got food coming in, Jack? <laughs> no, I'm okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Would you order, Jack? Please. Please tell me well, there's a burger and fries. Any water. Okay. Any <laughs> um, so, so, uh, so you got you know you guys are both drivers, so you can break this down in a way I think that nobody else can, right? Like this is what's so cool about having you on, Jack. So to preview this weekend, um, first off, and your answers can differ. Whose car is going to perform the best in Austin? Like, what team has the edge here? Um. From from my side, I would say McLaren would have the edge, um, just because it, I I remember they've been very strong on all the curb ridings and um, bumpy sections of track, and Austin over the years has gotten really bumpy. So I would say they they'd probably have the best package to start the weekend. Um, I would say just based on those facts, but I know a lot of a lot of teams are bringing some some big upgrades this yeah. weekend. So, Tim, what are your thoughts? Yeah, that, I was just going to say that. I mean, I think like you know, not too sure what Red Bull's bringing just yet, but I have a feeling it's going to be a new front wing. I, I have a feeling it's going to be uh, a flexier front wing mm-hmm. <laughs> within the limits, obviously. What, what gave that away, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> just got a hunch. I, I just think that, you know, maybe may, may happen this weekend. It'll be interesting to see though. But I mean, it's a, I think it's a big weekend for Red Bull though. I, you know, they have to find a way of fighting back at, at some point. Mm. And you're kind of just, so, sometimes I come into these weekends and I'm just waiting for like Red Bull to throw that one like haymaker. It's just going to end it. And it's just like you haven't seen it. And you haven't seen it from from Max. I mean, obviously, the car has been difficult to drive. Um, and he's been able to squeeze a lot of performance out of that car, which is is uh, pretty spectacular. And the level that he's at is, is amazing. But uh, I, I'm just going to be curious to know some of these upgrades, especially Red Bulls, because I think they're I think they're cooking up something. But will it be big enough to, to overcome whatever McLaren has? You know, that that'll be the question, I think, Adam. 
what other teams are bringing upgrades? And Jack, you if it's Aston Martin and you can't say that's okay. Uh, <laughs> that's bringing upgrades, yes. <laughs> Maybe, probably, yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't know what teams are official and what teams aren't official. Okay. I know I've seen the Red Bull stuff. Um, but that's the only one I've seen. So maybe, maybe you guys can help me. Out. Tim, what do you got? <laughs> I, you know, I think, I think, I think I don't want to get in too much trouble, but I think Aston's bringing some stuff for this weekend. Okay. Um, Possibly. Yeah. I can't really say. What, oh, look, at, but, look yeah. at the two of you being all cagey. Come on now. <laughs> What is no, this? No, wait, dude. I ain't getting in trouble. It's, like, get it's trouble. like I'm at a, like an eighth grade dance. Be like, go ask her to dance. What's the problem? You guys are just giggling in the corner. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is where this is where this is. This is fun for me, by the way. I'm enjoying this. Um, you know, when you when you have a bumpy course and you're bringing upgrades. OK, so the car is going to feel different as a driver. How do you find the new? level how do you find the new limit of the car how do you feel comfortable in a car especially at an uncomfortable and extremely hot track uh, that's actually that's a that, that's a good question for for jack because like i mean i think with like this new era of young drivers and we've talked about it on the show before adam they just they get to they get to grips with everything just so much faster now than what we used to be able to get to grips with right like we used to get lots of practice well the formula one does get does get a lot of practice but a lot of laps, like, you know, you go into yeah. FP, FP1, FP2, you know, you're lucky if you're going to get 20 laps and it's kind of like, uh, you know, it may not be enough. Like, so yeah, that definitely be a good question, uh, obviously for Jack. And then with Austin, you know, clearly they've, they've resurfaced the track here. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be curious to see Jack, if it's going to be as bumpy as it, as it used to be. Yeah. I didn't know if they resurfaced or not, uh, or not. Um, but you know, all the, all the drivers in the teams, they, they, Nowadays, they're able to, to work on the simulator and stuff, which I think is a big help. Um, I think this sort of simulator era um, for the drivers has been huge. How accurate they've been able to get it, how how they can, you know, apply the upgrades and already have a feel of, of what it's going to be like. They can, you know, put in conditions, um, certain grip conditions, certain track temperature conditions, uh, wind conditions. You can do it all. Mm. Um so I, I think that's that's also a big thing, um, and you know it, it just gives every it just gives the drivers a better understanding and a good feeling. Um, to say when they go for their first lap in practice, they'll um, you know be able to push the limit. Let's say five percent more than yep. if they 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 weren't able to have that practice. So. Hmm. Yeah, and and so um, you know Jack, you're on a team which at the top of this team is Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso. Um, when you watch a guy like Fernando Alonso, have you had the chance to sit down with him, talk to him, shake his hand, anything yet? Yeah, yeah, not not properly. I, I've shaken his hand, but I've never like properly sat down and have a chat. I mean, they're the drivers; they're so busy on on the weekends, sure. man. It's it's crazy. Um, but no, um, both of them are are great. I mean, I I sit in the the engineering meetings and stuff when when I'm at the track and always, always listening to them and they always, you know, say hi when they, when they walk in. So um, that's about all it goes to in terms of communication with them. Are but, you I mean, I get to listen to them and listen to them speak about their feedback and stuff. So. What do you, what do you take from those meetings? Like when you're talking, when you're hearing Lance, who's I think coming up on 200 races here, Fernando, uh, you know, Fernando's coming up on 400. Yeah. yeah. It's wild. <laughs> just a wild number. Um, you know, they must give feedback in a, in a way that you're like, man, I hadn't even thought about that. Like what kinds of things do you learn from those meetings? Yeah. I'm just trying to kind of look at, look at different angles, different things I haven't let's say thought about before or, um, like things that I can be like, all right, like I didn't think about it that way, but I can, I can feel that, you know, I know, I know what that is. Um, and you know, some different ways to describe some things as well. Hmm. Um, you know, that's, that's always helpful just to have, you know, a bigger, um, a bigger, you know, more knowledge is always better. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, better understanding of all this. And as well, just to learn from the engineers as well, kind of what they say, you know, I, I obviously work with my engineers in that too, but also what they say, what they kind of do, what, 
when they're struggling with with certain aspects of the car so i think that's also very good to listen to as well yeah yeah when you uh when you, when you kind of see different driving styles jack and i mean obviously you're you know you're you're being yep. exposed to, to quite a few different driving styles as you make your way up through the ladder system but like once you get into f1 like you can still see that each driver does have their own style like did you look at look at that and look at the data and kind of just scratch your head being like how is that even possible <laughs> yeah it's um it's interesting always to see data i mean um i mean fernando for instance he's driven so many different types of yeah. cars and you know he's been able to adapt to, to every kind um you know the f1's changed huge, like massively over the you know when since he came into sport over over 20 years ago so I mean, it's uh, it's interesting to see how he sort of adapts to things and his sort of um, driving approach. Um, I think on, on on the data and stuff, it's it's not so clear. Um, like it's pretty, you would say, oh, that that's normal. But I think mm. year to year would be more impressive to see mm. for sure. Right, right. Now, Jack, I know we we are running. You've been so gracious with your time here, and I know we go <laughs> where we are running a little low on it. But I did want to ask you before. Uh, we go like, you know, for anybody that's been introduced to you uh, over this interview or was aware of you before, obviously um, we're, we're happy that you uh, that you're finding more people every, you know, every day and that you're finding more success every day. What's the next goal in your mind? Is it to win F2 in uh, 2025? I can't believe we're at 2025 already, by the way. I'm feeling very old. Jack, don't you? I know you're only 19, man, but it happens fast. I'm telling you. Um, uh, it happens real fast. It's scary. It does. Um, uh, all of a sudden, I'm going to be, you know, th I'm 36. Uh, so I want to know from you, like, um, uh, is, is it okay? Now the focus is win F2. And then the focus after that is what is it? So what's 2025 for Jack Crawford? Um, yeah, I still have some, some goals for this year. Um, I mean, we still have, we still have two more races. It's not over yet. Oh, <laughs> I know. Ex exactly. Exactly. Well, what are the goals but, for this year? Let's finish that off. What do you want to do? Yeah. I mean, uh, I would love to, to finish the year in the top three. That'd be, be great. That's my goal. And you um, can, I can, I'm not, I'm not too far. I think just a bit over 20 points possibly from third, um, which is, which is feasible, of course. Um, so that's possible. And then going forward, I think, I think that obviously my, my main goal, my main objective is to be in F1. Um, I would love to race in F1, um, win in F1, that'd be great. And I think, you know, the best way to get there, of course, is by, by winning F2 next year. I think that's the, the best way, um, you can you can put yourself in in conversations just by winning races mm -hmm. um, and winning winning championships. I think that's that's the best and easiest way. Um, I think, and it's the you know that's the the thing I have to do for sure. Yeah, and and I mean, does the fact that there's four rookies entering F1 this year does that get you excited? Because seems like lots of spaces are opening up mm -hmm. for young guys like you. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, you know, I, I hope. They can do well, of course, um, because I, I think I've I've shown I can compete with them and and race with them, and um, you know I hope they do well. So it definitely makes me look better. So I'm hoping they do well, and 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 for sure it's cool to see like even someone like Ollie when he raced earlier this year or Franco um, immediately doing well um, in the car. So of course that that's great to see, and it just also proves to me that, you know, with the, the right opportunity, with the right preparation, that I could as well um, do the same as them. Tim, any other questions? No, I just want to thank you for your time, Jack. I really appreciate it, man. I really appreciate yeah, you to, to taking no the time to sit down and, and do this with us. Uh, I'll be in the paddock this weekend, so I'll uh, drop okay, by. Cool. I'll see you around. So, yeah, I'll yeah. drop by, say hi, introduce myself in person. You can see how red cool. this actually is. I going to say, <laughs> look, look, just... look for the like guy who forgot his sunscreen, Jack. I'm sure they'll have some for you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some Aramco uh, labeled uh, green sunscreen for Tim. Uh, <laughs> but Jack, you're you're a real pleasure, man. It's it's nice to meet you. Uh, we wish you all the best for the last few races of the season, and yeah. and in 2025, uh, we'll be rooting for you on a personal level. Now, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks for having me.
So that was Jack Crawford from Dams, uh, Formula 2 driver, fifth place right now, wants to finish in the top three. We're excited for him. And next year, you just never know. Uh, yeah. Other notable Dams drivers include Tim, favorite Nicol- of yours. <laughs> yeah, Nicholas Latifi. Nicholas Latifi, <laughs> and who won a lot of races with them. He did. Yeah, he won a lot. Won a lot. Yeah, and finished uh, yeah. P2 in the P2 in the championship, vice champion in uh, 2019. Yeah, so... Yep. Yeah, no, they're they're a good team. Um, yeah, got to see how they worked with Nicholas back in the day, and um, they are they are very well run and very well structured. And I think that as a young driver, that's kind of where you want to be, either with right. them or with like a team like Prema, who is you know Prema is probably like one of the best junior teams yep. in in all of uh that ladder system and then obviously prema going to be running an indy car next year um but i mean he's on a he's on a good team he's going to learn a lot there and you know what look out for him next season man like he he actually really impressed me this this year like i was because i wasn't too sure how this year was going to go considering with like the way the car has been how tricky yep. it's been. And he's been really impressive. So yeah, I'm excited to see what he can do next year, Adam. I, I honestly think that he can fight for a championship next season for sure. Which is very, very cool. And that would be yeah. very exciting for him. Yeah. He's, he's had to, you know, change programs and all that stuff uh, from the Red Bull program to the Aston Martin. That's not easy. He's 19. Mm-hmm. He just did interviews for 48 hours and then had to sit down with us for, you know, another yeah. half an hour. Like the guy's, <laughs> the guy's busy, man. I, I, uh, I, I really, I really appreciated how honest he was. And, you know, for 19, to not be shy, I'm. I, I, uh, I have a ton of respect for that. A ton Dude, I wish I was like that when I was 19. <laughs> I probably oh. would have said something stupid. I, I, I know I would have said something stupid. Yeah, I sure. was stupid. I was pretty <laughs> stupid. Um, so, so obviously, you know, not that much has changed. But Tim, the uh, the uh, the race this weekend, we talked a little bit about Jack, but sorry, with Jack. But I wanted to take five minutes to yeah. just say, okay, so we got the USGP. We haven't raced in a month. What are you expecting to see? Obviously, we hinted at a potential Aston Martin upgrade. You think Red Bull will bring a flexi wing. What else are we expecting to see? Is Ferrari or Mercedes a potential sleeper to win this race and steal it from out, out from under Red Bull and McLaren? What are your th- mm-hmm. thoughts on it? Yeah, I think I think you are going to have like at four teams um, in contention for race victory and also podiums as well right. because you know we've had three weeks off here, Adam. And that's a long time that these teams can actually go and work on stuff, right? Like, yeah, this is where we're at. Like teams are going to be bringing stuff, man. Like they're all going to bring stuff. It's just, you know, how big of a step is it? Does it work? Um, and then, you know, how are the, how are the drivers? Like how comfortable are, are they with these upgrades? Is everybody able to get this, the right ride heights, right amount of tire temperature, you know, make sure they limit their mistakes. All of these different things just coming back into play, which should be an an exciting finish to this season, Adam. Like I, yeah. I really do believe like it's gonna come down to come down to the last race of the season for the drivers. And it could also come down to the last race of the season for, you know, at least three teams in the constructor standings. Yeah. Yeah. I mean Ferrari is still in it. Yeah, um, for sure. And, and 100%. You- you mentioned the knockout punch from Red Bull. It seems that if they're going to do that, and this is a good track to do it at, yeah, got to be uh, now. You want to get it? Yeah. What's that? It's got to be now. Yeah, it, it does have to be now. Otherwise, it's just so. going to the gap's going to be too close. And I, I wonder how much of that knockout punch rests not with Max but with Sergio. Mm. I and think his performance. Yeah, I you know I think. Um, I don't like, I think for the constructors, yes. I mean, a lot of this has to ride on Sergio Perez's shoulders. Uh, for the, for the drivers, I honestly just think, Adam, it's coming down to, to Lando and Max, and those two are just going to go toe to toe from here on out. I think Singapore was a perfect example of what that's going to look like. Um, from, from those two. I mean, can other teams get in the mix, like throw a wrench into Max's plans? I mean, absolutely. Other drivers can as well. Will Sergio? I highly doubt it. I mean, he's got his own problems he's going to have to deal with here, Adam. Like, you got Liam Lawson, who they're testing out now to see if they're going to re- use him to replace Sergio for next year. 
because uh, that's let's face it, that's that's what this is, right? For Liam, right? They're just seeing what they got, seeing if he's going to be good enough to replace Sergio for next year, because they are definitely going to need a second driver who is close to Verstappen's level. Because next year, Adam, I mean, oh. forget about it. Like it's going to be yep. off the charts, like just completely off the charts. How uh, competitive it's going to be for the drivers' championship and the constructors as well. But for this weekend. I really feel like this is the weekend where, you know, Red Bull, like either just, they're just throwing a Hail Mary with new components and just hoping that it works. Right. Right. And that's always fun. <laughs> we like it. We like a Hail Mary. That's dramatic and awesome. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. Right. I mean, Football reference, obviously, we're here in Texas, and there is a big. That's right, uh, absolutely. Long, there, there is a big Longhorns game this weekend, Adam, on Saturday. But I digress. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- this definitely has to be it. So whatever, whatever it is they're going to be bringing has to has to be what gets them back on the right track, and has to be what's going to allow Max to like land one of those just killer shots, right? Right. Right. And, and, uh, and I just want to quickly touch on Mercedes before we go here, just because I did bring them up. They had a really strong end of the summer. Uh, and then, uh, well, they were really strong going into the break, I guess. And then they haven't been as strong since they've been okay. They've been, there've been good moments and that sort of thing, but the consistency hasn't been there, you know, getting them back to the podium all the time. Um, what do you expect from them this weekend? Because it has been a Mm -hmm. summer sized break since we saw another, since we saw a, a race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just try to get back to where they were, right? I mean, obviously, it kind of seems like they've, they dipped off a bit there when we came back from summer break, and it hasn't really um, smooth sailing for them whatsoever. But I honestly think that this, this three weeks is going to help a lot of the teams, it could hinder some of the teams. um, And we could see some big turnarounds because of this three week break. Now it's, it's very important to point that out just because, you know, that's all the teams have to focus on for this three weeks, right? was just working on components, working on parts for the car, trying to make sure that they're going to work when they bring them um, to the car, to the track. And then that's it. They're not having to fly around the world, race. They're not having to split resources. They're not having to worry about any of those things. All they had to focus on, all of these teams had to focus on, Adam, is just getting right components to finish this season strong. Okay. All right. Well, it's going to be an exciting race. Tim is down at the USGP. Uh, it'll be sad without Daniel Ricardo. It's going to be, uh, yeah. it'll be, you know, he's always makes a great entrance. Yeah. Um, and uh, by the way, that the, the, the picture on Instagram with the retirement hat apparently was just a joke, which is obvious, <laughs> pretty obvious. I think that's a hilarious hat though. Um, uh, maybe one day we see him, back in Austin in a different series. He actually has a uh, pop-up shop here in Austin for this weekend. It's on, oh. uh, yeah, for those who are listening uh, to the pod who are going to the race this weekend, uh, I think if you check out his, I think it's on his Instagram, but he has a pop-up shop that's downtown Austin that's opening Friday and Saturday. It opens at 10 a.m. on Friday, 11 a.m. on Saturday. And so, yeah, you can go down there and grab some of his uh, Enchante gear. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Uh, Well, Tim, uh, have a great time, man. I'm going to try not to bug you all weekend long, but uh, very excited. And we'll, we'll chat again on Monday, okay? Sounds good, Adam. Thanks again for doing this, man.